Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Jonathan McReynolds, and you can check out my boy, David Dwayne. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning back into On Air with your one and only rock star and Mike David Dwayne in the place to be on My Fear Swings Radio. We've got our boy recording artist, gospel recording artist at that, Jonathan McReynolds, on with us. Now, if y'all don't know who Jonathan is, oh, my goodness, where have you guys been? He has this brand new gospel inspiration album that I love that's called Make Room. Out right now, you guys need to download it, iTunes, wherever you get your music, and Jonathan's joined with us. How's it going, Jonathan? Hey, bro. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. How are you? Oh, man, I'm pretty good. Now the album's finally out, I feel pretty good. Absolutely. And I got to say, congratulations on this album and, you know, just being, you know, such a great body of work. Congratulations on it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, bro. No doubt. So let me ask you, you know, going into the recording process, because this album is, you know, you decided to record this album live versus, you know, studio, studio album. You know, what was the uh, approach with wanting to make that um, transition with this project? Yeah, the first two albums were definitely studio albums. And, uh, you know, I find solace in that because I can normally just kind of write uh, and record spontaneously just as I feel it, as I can do it. Uh, and it's always controlled. It's just me and maybe a few uh, producers or musicians. But this one was different. We knew that we have a special vibe when it's, a, you know, during a live concert. There's an entirely different flow. There's laughter. There's people, you know, making noise at the lyrics, you know, all that other stuff. And we want to capture that. Also, I mean, I think I even approach a lot of things differently. You know, you um, you know, you just hear things, you know, in the moment that never get captured on the on the album. And people always said, "Man, your albums are great, but the live is just crazy." So we decided, let's try it this time, and it was definitely different. It was a lot more stressful because <laughs> you know you have to you got one shot. I mean, you have one shot. I mean, literally, uh, the album is full of the first times that I've ever sung this song, you know? And so that's really just an incredible uh, feat. But I really believe that, uh, you know, the, the atmosphere, the vibe, and what God did in that room that night was spectacular. And I'm just really glad it all got captured uh, correctly on that album. And how would you say, like, was there a lot of preparation before, you know, getting ready to, like, actually record the live process of the album because I know it can be, it's, it's definitely a different um, process thing, you know, just get in the studio and boom, okay, we're writing, we're in, we're out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think uh, this one, you know, I'm not a, the type of person who likes to over-rehearse. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I like to leave a lot of things a little open. Let's have an idea, let's know what the pieces are, and we'll figure, we'll fit them together, uh, you know, when, when it's the time. And so, I mean, I have an incredible group of music who can absolutely, you know, play it perfectly without, you know, rehearsing it 8 million times. And so, you know, as far as preparation, it was really just about writing the songs, make sure that I'm saying what I wanted to say. Uh, you know, we had probably two or three rehearsals, but, you know, definitely not an over-rehearsed album. And I think you hear all those moments of tension when we kind of were moving, uh, you know, and it's not rehearsed. It's not something that we you know, planned on doing. We didn't plan on the audience being this loud. We didn't plan we didn't plan on people yelling this much at this point on this song. And so all that it, to me is what makes, you know, a true live record. And I mean we do have you know, some fake live records out there where it's just like a studio album and then you hear the class at the end. But I mean this is a straight up you can hear the audience throughout the song. They have their own lyrics, you know, they have their own ad libs and I think that's what makes a uh, live album, really, really spectacular, really cool. Maybe scary uh, in the moment, uh, but when you hear it all together, it's like, wow, uh, you know, that was really different and necessary. Absolutely. And it's crazy that you mentioned the fact of, like, the audience actually being engaged and stuff like that, because I listened to that. Like, I'm I'm really into music, so my ear was, like, tuned in, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The audience is really getting it. They're into it. I can hear it. I feel it genuinely. I don't. It's like you can tell that it was all real. Like some people, you know, like you said, go do a quote unquote live album, and it's like you know that was not live. You know, you put the audience in the at, at the end. You don't even hear them through the whole thing, or you just muted them out. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I mean, I definitely, you know, you definitely want at the end of the day, you want it to be a great musical number. You want it to show up. Uh, you wanted to, you know, represent the best that you and your band could have done that day. Uh, but, you know, it's sometimes, like in this case, it worked out perfectly. You know, it worked out in a manner that, 
you know, how we presented it that night, what God did that night, where my voice was that night, how the band was locked in that night, plus the audience really taking to every song. It all was just perfect. It all just worked out. And so uh, glory to God and, and preparation and just the gifts that he's given us uh, because, um, yeah, it just it worked out. It worked out good. I mean, we were certainly ready to do that route if we needed to, but we didn't need to. And I'm really glad that that got picked up on this album. Absolutely. And let's talk about the um, the first single, I'm Not Lucky, I'm Loved, because definitely can feel um, like I can relate to that record a lot. I tell people that all the time, like, I'm not lucky at all by any blessings. You know, like, I'm loved and highly favored by God. Everything that he gives is a blessing. It's not about being lucky, you know, and I, and I, and I felt that, you know, with this song, you know, what was the inspiration for you to just, you know, be able to convey such a strong message like that? Because it's something that people definitely need to hear, especially people that are, you know, doubters in their own rights and don't feel like they can do it or they feel like, you know, God's, you know, giving this person, you know, um, all the glory, but he's not giving me glory, but when all actuality, he's giving us all glory. Yeah, I mean, at, at, at the end of the day, he has a plan for all of us, and he had a plan before we were even born. He, he knew our end before our beginning. And so at the end of the day, he has this this master plan, and I don't believe it's always, you know, a you know a straight line, no changes type thing, but I think he does right. have an ultimate purpose for our lives, and we figure that out, and we, we will that out through our actions and our decisions. But at the end of the day, there's something that is holding it all together. And, I mean, we make lefts and rights, and he tells us go right and have time. We go left anyway. But there's something holding that together, and it's not just good luck. It's not coincidence. It's not chance. What is holding all those coincidental things together? That is the love of God. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I've made – I've not been on some straight path where I've made all the right decisions, and that's why I'm here, and I can – I can credit all those great decisions. No, at the end of the day, I'm realizing how many wrong decisions I, I I'm realizing how many uh, good opportunities I missed. And uh, based on my own lack of work ethic or my own fear or whatever, at the end of the day, why am I still here? And how am I still being maintained? How am I still growing and progressing? Well, it was all held together by something stronger and more lasting than luck. And that's God's love for me and his commitment to the purpose that he's put on my life. Amen to that. Amen to that, brother, because that, that's just the truth. And I feel like it, it takes time for some people to, you know, feel that, believe that within them own self. But I know personally for myself, like as I said, I constantly preach that to people all the time. So I, all of what you're saying is the truth. Thank you, sir. No doubt, no doubt. And the fact that this record has gotten great response, it even debuted, you know, number one on Billboard um, Digital Gospel charts. Like that. How did that make you feel like, you know, for such a strong message? Because sometimes a lot of artists, just artists in general, not even just gospel, artists release a record that is has a great message, great concept, definitely something that can be impactful, but it does not impact and it doesn't get the recognition. So for this record to, to receive that, how does that make you feel? Well, I think it's just a, a testament of just a, a, a long, uh, you know, journey, and we've built up a certain reputation, you know, for this thing. And, um, you know, I'm really grateful for everybody out there that's been supporting, you know, for uh, up to seven years now. And I think that we've built a certain uh, expectation for, you know, messaging. We've met, uh, built a certain reputa- uh, reputation of saying stuff that is a little more, you know, it doesn't just scratch the surface. It kind of does dig a little deeper into a message or digging deeper into a thought process or a doctrine or a, or a belief system. And so I just really am grateful that people now expect that from me. I mean, they, they, they say, you know, there was a time when I had to tell everybody, all right, chill out. I'm about to do something. <laughs> I'm about to say something that's a little deep. So it's not, it's not the normal church song, but now they do it themselves and they're ready. Everybody's like, okay, Jonathan's coming. Let's quiet down. Let's listen to what he's saying. And that's really just a, a dope thing and, and just a testament to trying to stay true to whatever you do. Uh, you know, it was definitely not easy when you, when you first started. And it's still not always easy every time. Exactly. But definitely over time, people that have been following you, that have been paying attention to you, when you do it with integrity, uh, artistic integrity, 
man, you know, eventually people come around and they start expecting exactly what you were planning to give them, and that's just a blessing. Amen. That's, that is the truth. Wow. I could not have said it any better because I literally say those exact words every single day. Like, I do Instagram lives. I'm always connecting with my followers and telling them, you know, those exact words. So that's, that's dope to hear you say it. And speaking of social media, on your social media even, you, um, you, do, you post inspirational videos as well, you know, just, you know, speaking to your followers just about um, not even just things that are, of course, in the Bible, but things that are just in life. How, how does that feel, being able to, you know, connect and, you know, spread your testimony and spread, you know, the Word of God, you know, on a social platform? Yeah, I feel like that's, it's our purpose, man. You know, I feel like uh, for a lot of people, to a lot of people, Christianity is kind of a, you know, compartmentalized thing. It's like, okay, I, I can, I, I'm a Christian on Sunday. You know, I go to church, and that's it, right? And, you know, honestly, people don't always realize the implications that being a Christian and believing in this faith have for the rest of our lives, our weekly lives, our walking up and down the street, our, you know, you know, dealings at work, our dealings with dating and everything else. Christianity has something to say to all of that. The Holy Spirit living in us has something to say to all of that. And it's really important that, you know, uh, you know, people who, you know, have been given a certain revelation about it have the opportunity to say, hey, look, this is, I understand that you don't always, so I certainly didn't. Being in church my whole life, I didn't really understand how that was supposed to meet actual life, real life. Okay, so right. after church and I go to school for the work, that's that's it, right? That's enough Jesus, right? No, actually, he shows up even better in our daily lives. He shows up even more powerful and yeah. impactful in our regular lives. And so I'm not doing anything special. I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said or shouldn't, at least shouldn't have been said for a long time. But at the end of the day, uh, having this faith has a lot more implications in our real life than we often no- notice in this generation. And so I'm just really blessed that I get the opportunity to write music and also, you know, make videos, write blogs, write articles, and even a book coming out this year where I can really help people uh, make room uh <laughs> make room for God uh, in their daily lives because it's very important. Absolutely. And let's, and let's touch on writing because your writing is definitely exceptional. So, like, with this book, what kind of um, – is it going to be, like, an inspirational book? What kind of book um, is this going to be? Yeah, man, I'm excited about it. It's just a – it's a, it's a uh, uh, I guess, a partner to the album where, you know, the album I'm talking about, Making Room for God, and I think I just – kind of elaborate on what that means to make room for God in your make room for God in your circle, your social circle. Make room for God in your dream, your goals. Uh make room for God in all those things that we're so ambitious about. Make room for God in your environment. I mean there's a lot of ways that, you know, I think that we make room for a lot of other people. We make room for a lot of other uh, you know, uh, hopes and dreams. We make room room for a lot of uh, you know, New Year's resolutions. We make room for a lot of stuff, and we neglect often to make room for God who ultimately makes room for us in all those other areas. And so I just think that if we can go back to seeking first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all those other things, this is what the Bible says, all that other stuff that you worry about, what to eat, what to wear, you know, how to do this, where to go, where to work, all that other stuff will be added to you because you sought out the thing that actually matters the most. And um, that's what this book is about, is just to really help people realize how the trajectory of their life really depends on how much room they make for God. Exactly. And that's the truth. I feel like people should make more room for God because there's, like, just like you said, He's done everything for us. He makes time, makes room for us. He, we don't ever have to wait for Him. It's more so that we, we make him wait for us when we should be giving him all the glory and giving him all the credit. And I feel like if we all sat down, first of all, realize that faith is here always. I feel like that's, I think that's a, the biggest thing that some people, some, some people are in deny about it. And in a way where it's not like, I'm saying like, they're not, not saying that they're not a believer, but it's in a way where they don't understand that he's the reason for the season and he's making time and that if you just trust in him, he will make all those things that you worry about not even a worry. So often he, he 
ask us not to worry about things, just pray about it. Um, Because at the end of the day, I don't think we um, realize his perspective. I think we still think God is a a day-to-day God that kind of sees stuff happen as we see it. And it, and maybe maybe he's like a week ahead guy, that he kind of sees how this particular event or situation or relationship is going to work out. But people don't realize he's an eternal guy. He's sitting outside of time. He's looking at the end. It's kind of like being in a hot air balloon looking down at a parade. You can see the beginning and the end of it at the same time. And I think that, you know, we have to realize his perspective. And when you think of him having an eternal perspective, seeing how we are and how we will be and how we were at the same time, I think that would change our perspective. We don't just need him to kind of help us through. We need him and we actually benefit from having him uh, and having his perspective because ultimately he sees past every little day-to-day up and down that we have and every little rinky-dink relationship that we can find ourselves in, he sees the lasting impact. He sees what actually lasts forever in us. And so I think we just kind of miss out on the true fruit of the faith when we don't actually make room for him in our daily lives and we just give him kind of this ceremonial, inspirational time on Sunday or when we hear a nice gospel song. Man, he wants your every because technically he already made it. Yeah. He was already there. So, yeah, man, that's all That's all this album is about, man. It's all the book coming out. It's just the season I am in my life, man. And so I'm just really grateful that people are getting able to kind of see where my head is at in this season. Exactly. And how would you say, like, the response has been to the um, the project so far? Like, because you have a lot of great records, and I definitely want to talk about a few more before we get off the line. But how has that response been to, you know, the records that people have heard? Man, it's been incredible, man. I mean, you know, uh, every every album, man, we always have a single. We always have a radio single that goes to radio and does all the commercial stuff. It was God Have You before. It was I Love You before. Now it's Lucky I'm Loved. But the response to the other songs on the album, the tracks, is always even more than the single. And it's just amazing to watch people, you know, gravitate to cycles, gravitate to love of my soul and make room and better uh, in a special way that sometimes even exceeds the, you know, official, you know, commercial single. So that's just a beautiful thing. And I'm really blessed that people are hearing my whole journey uh, and relating to it. Exactly. And I, and I love the fact that people are, you know, hearing your journey. Um, and I, what just so dope about, you know, your journey with this album, you, the record, cycles like and it's taken a course of its own is there's even a challenge people are responding to it as well on social media like did you think that that song was really going to be you know it was like really going to gravitate to people the way that it is yeah i mean no not at all when you listen to the record um you'll, you'll even hear that at the recording you know, it was the third song of the recording. I kind of expected it to be a, you know, a, 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 I don't want to say melancholy song, but just kind of a chill song that people listen to the words like, hmm, wow, okay. You know, because I knew that we had some heat, you know, coming at the end or coming, right. you know, as the show moved on. But if you listen to the, when you listen to the album, you'll hear me say, it's too early for this because it's going crazy. And honestly, you know, just a, a fun fact about the album uh, on the Cycles track, I actually took 10 minutes out of it, just 10 minutes of repo, 10 minutes. It's already, uh, you know, the track and the, uh, you know, reprise track is already 10 minutes long. And I took 10, 15 more minutes out of that just to, you know, not <laughs> not kill everybody listening because it just went crazy in that night. And now every time I've sung it live and just everything with the Cycles Challenge, the, the everything, I, it's just really amazing how people – to that song but I mean even from the beginning when uh, we actually sung it live for the first time in front of people uh, I was like whoa y'all it's too early for this <laughs> you know we, we've been on this song for 30 minutes we still got you know two and a half hours worth of music left so uh, you know it was just an incredible night uh, or it was incredible uh, response in that night and everything that has come from that uh, all the cycles challenge and you got you know celebrities doing it you know you got uh celebrities sending stuff to me, DMing their own videos because they don't want to actually post them because they're afraid of it or it doesn't oh, fit wow. their brand or whatever. So I can't even tell you who did it, but it's just a lot of incredible people that you would not expect at all. And and really? uh, it's just really, yeah, it's just really cool because 
uh, I just never writing that song and and rehearsing it. You just never have any idea that people are going to be uh, taking it back the way they were. And so, you know, glory to God. I was just writing another song about my life and the things that I wanted to avoid. Yeah, definitely, and much and much glory to God because I see like the reaction that people have when it comes to cycles. I'm just like, yo, it's that's crazy. And it's it's like I feel like every artist has a song or two or three or four or even the whole project where people are just like they connect and they gravitate. But to see what cycles because the message behind it is so amazing. If you guys don't have Jonathan's album, you need to download it right now. Make room. You understand exactly what we're talking about and why this challenge is just so amazing on social media, which you have to check out too. And what's amazing also is the actual title track. Make Room. I love, 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 love that record. I mean, it speaks for itself. You know, being able to, you know, just kind of going back to what we were saying, just being able to um, convey important messages to people. Um, was it ever hard for you to, you know, ever say, you know, I, I want to, this is what I want to say with this album, you know, in this process. Was it ever hard for you? No, uh, no, nah, nah, man. You know that's one thing. Not, I'm definitely limited in certain aspects of life, but one of my strengths is being able to convey a message. Uh, you know, musically or you know, written or you know, just articulating it myself, man. I really, after I started writing songs, of course, you come up with a few of these songs well before you kind of get an album concept or you get an album theme or anything like that. But over time, I just started started uh, really harping on room, just room. God needs room. Make room. Somebody just give him some room. We don't give him any room. If he doesn't do it on Sunday, you know, between 10 and 2, then he doesn't have another chance to do anything in our lives until the next week. And so I was just starting to really um, uh, harp on that thing called room and actually make room, the actual song, uh, was probably one of the last songs that I wrote. Uh, on that album because I was like, I need a, I, I want a song that kind of solidifies, you know, and, and, and kind of wraps up everything that I'm trying to say in this album. Okay. I'm asking people to do better. I'm saying, let's, let's get rid of these cycles. And I'm telling everybody that comparison can kill us. And I'm telling everybody that, you know, uh, uh, I'm not lucky. I'm loved. And, you know, just to smile and to, to, to give God a chance in your daily life. How can I say all that? Okay, make room. And so, uh, you know, it was just really, uh, you know, a trip. And I was actually, I, I, I'm thinking it was actually one of the last songs uh, on that album and, um, uh, you know, that I actually wrote. And so, uh, and the way that hit that night, and you have Anthony Brown and Travis Green and Brian Courtney Wilson come and tag it at the end. Oh, man, it, it was just crazy. And uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. Uh, and so it was just really a, a blessed experience, and I hope that, you know, that, that conveys uh, to everybody that listens to the record. Absolutely, and I feel like this is definitely a great project where everybody can convey, you know, the message very thorough and, and feel the energy because you guys have a lot of energy while recording the process. I, I, like, I felt it while I was listening to it I, and, and listened to it. I was just like, wow, I feel it. I feel this, and just concept-wise, I'm just like, I feel this because I say this and I try to and I try to convey it to other people because these are things that people need to hear and you have to make room for God. Like I don't even know how best to say it besides people we need to make room for God. Like seriously. Now is the moment, not not just on Sunday, just like Jonathan said, because why just on Sunday? When he gives us every day, he gives us every second, everything down to it. Why give him less when he's giving us more? So I, I, I feel this whole project. And like I said, I encourage everybody to download this album. Amazing project. Vocals on 1000. Got to say, your vocal tone is so dope, too. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. No doubt. So I know that uh, with this album, um, you're also getting, you have a few shows that are coming up, too, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. We'll be getting around for. Uh, probably the rest of this year. So just make sure you go to Jonathan McGrinnell's for all the tour dates. I'll do my best to uh, also, you know, say it on social media and stuff like that as well. But if you want to kind of look ahead, go to JonathanMcGrinnell's.com. I normally put up at least the next five or six shows uh, at a time. And so, man, it's going to be a, a crazy 2018. We have some really special things scheduled for the summer and then a full tour in the fall. So 
Uh, I'm just really excited. I think our next stops are going to be in Dallas and Houston, uh, Chicago. We're doing a special screening in Chicago of the actual video from that live recording. Also expect to see wow. that video on, um, um, on uh, TV this, this month as well, on Palm Sunday and maybe even a few more times after that. So, I mean, this is a really great night. You guys are really going to love the, um, the video footage. I mean, it turned out as well or even better than the, than the album itself. I mean, it's just, it's just an incredible night. I mean, everything was perfect. Paco Wall said it was like a movie, and that's really what it was. And so uh, I hope you guys get all that, consume all that, and I'll see you on the road soon. Absolutely. Well, Jonathan, thanks, you know, so much for, you know, coming on this show, sharing, you know, this great body of work with us and being able to talk with it. We definitely appreciate that a lot. My dude, thank you so much. God bless you. Absolutely. And before we have you um, go and do some drops, tell everybody where they can, you know, follow you as far as, like, you know, your website, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that cool stuff. Yep, website is uh, on com. You can also, you know, of course, follow me, Twitter and Instagram, at J-O-N, Nick Reynolds, uh, M-C-R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S. It's like Reynolds rap. So go ahead and uh, go to John Nick Reynolds. Uh, also, of course, Facebook, Jonathan Nick Reynolds, Christ Rep. Uh, and check out all the stuff on YouTube. Uh, you know, we definitely... Uh, are withholding the new stuff because we know it's going on TV and in the movies. But, man, there's a lot of uh, stuff from the past records uh, that I really would love for you to see if you haven't heard of my music yet. So go to YouTube and check out those things, and then meet me at iTunes and Google Play with everybody else. So I uh, love you, and I can't wait to see you guys and hope that you relate to this music. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Jonathan McReynolds, and you can check out my boy, David Dwayne.